Hey everybody, J Chip Show here, and I hope you had a good new year. And today I thought it'd be cool to go through the games I beat in 2022. Captain Algebra and Retro Rivals did theirs, and I thought I'd do it too. Now I won't be doing the analytics that they did, just because I didn't really pay attention to that throughout the year, but I will be doing that next year, so look forward to that. Now there's a couple of games on here that I have beaten previously, but they're on here because either they're a different version or they're games I haven't played in a very long time. And also if I have a review of a game that I've beaten, I'll leave it down below in the description. And also de definitely check out Captain Ultra and Retro Rival because their videos were amazing. So anyways, let's get to the list. Alright, so first game we got is Turok Dinosaur Hunter for the N64. I have a review of this if you want to know my in-depth thoughts, but I thought it was a pretty fun game. Next game on the list is Final Fantasy VII. Now, I've been telling myself to play this game again uh, when the remake was announced, and I haven't played this game since I was like a junior in high school. And so when the remake finally came out, I wanted to play this, and I finally got the remake, and I played this, and I still haven't played the remake. I don't know, I'm just... I'm just very inconsistent, but this is a damn good game, and I love RPGs, um, and this is one of the best ones. Definitely really, really good. Really good story. Cloud, Sephiroth, oh man, it's so good. Uh, Tifa is Bay, and uh, yeah, I love it a lot, and I can't wait to play this again. Captain Algebra is going to be happy about this, because I beat Back to the Future on NES. Now let me just say, this game is not as bad as people make it out to be. It's a pretty good game. Sure, yeah, it's hard, but just because it's hard doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, some of you people like Dark Souls, and you think that game's amazing, but... Yeah, and also, just because a popular YouTuber said this game is bad, doesn't make it bad. You have to decide if a game is good or bad or not by playing it. And I played it, and I can determine that it was a pretty good game. Now, if you played it and you didn't like it, that's fine. But don't take someone's word until you actually played the game, because you just don't know. Maybe this could be your favorite game of all time, and if you haven't played it in a while, play it again. Just give it another chance. And, again, if you're basing it off of ABGN's opinion, who I am a big fan of, by the way, uh, definitely just give it a chance. You know, It's not that bad. It's a really fun game. The next bundle of games I beat was the Castlevania Trilogy on my Nintendo Switch, thanks to the Castlevania Anniversary Collect. Now, I did beat uh, Castlevania 2 physically, and as a three, this is my least favorite one. It's a little too cryptid and pretty easy once you figure out what you're doing. One is a timeless classic, but Castlevania 3 was my favorite. It's the hardest out of the trilogy, and to me, beating that game was just really cool because I overcame the hard bosses and all the hard shit that that game was giving me, and I finally beat it. And it was really cool. All three games, very good. Uh, even though this is my least favorite, still a solid game. And the other Castlevania game I beat this year was Circle of the Moon. Cartridge Club was doing a marathon of the three Castlevania games on the GBA. And I only played Circle of the Moon. Uh, Harmony Distance just wasn't doing it for me. Uh, maybe I'll give it another chance this year, but Circle of the Moon I played all the way through. Fantastic game. And I believe Nintendo Switch has it, the Advanced Collection on sale, which is how I was able to play the game. So. Yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't, because it's a damn good game. The next group of games I beat digitally, and they were the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy on the Super Nintendo. I beat these games on the Nintendo Switch Online. Donkey Kong Country 2 was a Cartridge Club game of the month, and I was like, you know what, let's play through all three of them. Because, well, I haven't played all three of them except for the first one. I never beat two or three. And the first one is still my favorite just because of nostalgia and because it has Donkey Kong in it. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 plays a little bit better, but for me personally, you know, I just like the first one more just because I had that nostalgia. And Donkey Kong Country 3 is solid, but Kitty Kong just sucks. I'm sorry, he's definitely the worst Kong out of the bunch, but still a solid game. Uh, overall, the trilogy is fantastic, and I do love... Uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii and Tropical Freeze. Tropical Freeze is my second favorite Donkey Kong game. That is a fantastic game, but we're here to talk about the original trilogy because that's what I beat, and uh, yeah, all three games, fantastic. 
Next game I beat was Hollow Knight. I played it digitally, that's why I don't have it for you. But that is a fantastic game. That's probably my favorite game that I beat this year. It is so damn good. Love the visuals, love the music, I love everything about it. And I do have a review of it if you want to know my thoughts in depth. I'll leave that in the description below, but it is a fantastic game. The same would also go for Death Store, which is another game I beat digitally on the Switch. I do plan on getting both physically. Both are fantastic games. Uh, Death Store just has a lot of humor and a lot of heart. It's so dark, but it's so funny at the same time. Uh, you play as a little Reaper. It's like a Diablo-style game with its isometric view. Fantastic game. Plan on getting both physically, and I've reviewed both, so if you want to check those out, They'll be in the description below. Next game is a controversial one, Pokemon Violet. Now, there's been a lot of controversy around Generation 9, and personally, I don't see the problem. I mean, yeah, there was some slowdown here and there, but I still had a really good time with it. It's a really fun game. Quaxley is my favorite starter out of the three. And while this isn't my favorite gen of all time, I'm glad that it took risks, and I'm definitely excited for the future with the Pokemon games. Next game I played was Super Mario Sunshine, and I played it on Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, I do like Mario 64 and Mario Galaxy, but I never played Sunshine. I don't know why, I just never did, but I finally did this year. But I finally did last year, and it's a really solid game. Not my favorite out of the 3D Mario games. I do like Galaxy the most, but Super Mario Sunshine was a really good game. Next game I beat was Final Fantasy X. Now, I have played Final Fantasy X numerous times, but I've never played it on the Switch. And I was wanting to play an RPG, and uh, yeah, I played X because it's very reliable. It's what I know the best. It's not my favorite Final Fantasy game, but it is a damn good one. And I don't care what anybody says, the laughing scene is awesome, and it was meant to be cringe. The next game I beat was Until Dawn. It was Halloween time, and I wanted to play a horror game. Heard good things about this from Captain Algebra and Retro Rivals, and so I played it. Only three people survived, which was kind of a shame because I wanted to save everybody, but uh, Emily is a bitch, so I was kind of happy that she bit the dust, but uh, maybe one day I'll go through and save everybody on here, but it was a really good game and I liked it. Next bundle of games I beat was Uncharted. I beat Uncharted 3, 4, and Lost Legacy for my Uncharted review series. I beat 1 and 2 in 2021, but I beat the rest in 2022. And I have a review for all of the Uncharted games that there is. Uncharted 4 is my favorite just because I think it has the best story. And it is the best ending for the Nathan Drake saga of Uncharted. Maybe they'll make more, but who knows. And I still have to see the movie. Um, but all of them are, are really good. I love, I love them all. The very first game I beat in 2022 was Metro 2033. And I played the Redux version on the PS4. And it is a pretty good game. Very atmospheric, very scary it's in some areas, but it's a little clunky. The action's kind of clunky, and the stealth is just all over the place. You either are perfect, or they just catch you all the time. I, I don't get it, but uh, I definitely am looking forward to playing Last Light. Um, before I got my PS5, I was actually playing Last Light, and I switched over to the PS5. So I lost that save file for... Uh, Metro Last Light, but I look forward to playing it this year, but 2033 was a pretty solid game um, And I definitely want to read the books at some point Unfortunately, I have to talk about this fucking piece of shit again But I did beat Belly of the Wizard Rocket Broomstick Racing and unfortunately I won't be getting that time back So you know what you fucking deserve game? That's what you deserve had to get the bad taste out of my mouth and I did it with Super Mario Galaxy 2 now, if you really like the first one, you'll really like this one. And honestly, they're the same game, just different overworld. Uh, Yoshi's in it, and there's some new power-ups. So, yeah, pretty good game. Next game I beat was Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and this time I beat it on the GameCube. Obviously, I played the PS1 version. It's my favorite franchise The next game I get beat. <coughs> next game I. The next game I beat was Ghost of Tsushima. I played that digitally thanks to the PlayStation Plus, and it was a really good game. 
apro view of it and it was such a good game great story great gameplay such a fantastic game definitely check out my review of that The next game I beat was Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Now, I played the Resident Evil 3 on the PlayStation 1 numerous times. It's one of my favorites in the end. In the... the next game I beat was Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on the GameCube. Now, I've played Resident Evil 3 numerous times on the PlayStation 1. It's one of my favorite entries within the series, and Resident Evil is my favorite franchise of all time. And I'm going through all, I'm going to try to get all the Resident Evil games on every single system. And I got all the GameCube games and I wanted to play the GameCube versions of Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica and 2 for a while. I played 2 a while back, uh, but in 2022 I finished 3. And it's a really good one, just like Resident Evil 2 on GameCube. There's a little bit of quality updates. Um, in my opinion, the controller on the GameCube just fits perfectly with Resident Evil. Even though I don't like using the joystick for tank controls, uh, it just works well on the GameCube for some reason. And it even looks a little bit better on, than the uh, PS1 version, but uh, one of my favorite entries and I'm glad I finally played it on the GameCube. And same thing with Code Veronica X. Now, for whatever reason, this game is just way too expensive. Uh, luckily I got a good deal to finally get this game, but I don't understand why this is so expensive, especially compared to the PS2 version, because they're really not that much different, other than just visually, but other than that, I mean, they're the same game. Um, if you want to play Code Veronica, definitely play the PS2 version, because it's way cheaper than this one. And the only Code Veronica that I have to beat to beat the all the versions is the original Dreamcast version. But I beat the GameCube version when I got it this year, last year. And it's a really solid game. Not my favorite Resident Evil, and it definitely needs a remake, but still really good. The next game I beat in 2022 was Grand Theft Auto 3. Awesome game, had a lot of fun, I even lost my hand thanks to Dizzy the Gamer Jet. The next game I beat was The Bouncer. Really off the wall, weird ass game. I mean, uh, the story is just all over the place. Uh, I did review this, so if you want to check that out, uh, it'll be in the description below. I do like some ideas, like with the three main characters, you can switch them to get uh, different points of view. Wasn't executed very well, but still a pretty solid game. And it was, it was fun. Story is weird though. Next game I beat was Kim Possible's What's the Switch. Did a review of it. Metal Jesus said that this was a hidden gem and it's a pretty solid game. Not my favorite, but it was all right. Still haven't seen the show though, but maybe one day. So last year I got into the Splinter Cell games and I played Splinter Cell and Splinter Cell's Pandora's Tomorrow and pretty solid games. This was definitely the better one uh, for this one. I don't know, I just kept on getting caught like multiple times and I don't understand why. Like I was doing everything I could to make sure my opponent wouldn't hear me, but for whatever reason they would catch me. But in this one I just felt like the balance was a little bit more fair and the story was definitely better. This one also had a very anticlimactic ending. I am looking forward to playing Chaos Theory because I hear that's the best one. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I'm pretty sure I'll beat it this year, so you'll hear my thoughts um, when I get to that video next year. Now, I believe this was the second game I beat in 2022, and that's Smuggler's Run. Um, pretty solid game. It was a launch title for the PS2. Some of the missions are very, very easy, and some of the missions are very, very hard. So much time limit in this game, and it's bullshit I don't know to me I just hate short time limits I just feel like it makes the game harder than it should be but other than that it's still a pretty decent game it's made by Rockstar so you know it's gonna be solid and the last game is Neo Contra 
Now, Captain Algebra was streaming this, and this is kind of a pseudo community playthrough because he was streaming it, and while he was streaming it, I was playing it. So we were both kind of playing at the same time, and uh, yeah, really awesome Contra game. So much fun. It is difficult like the other Contra games, but once you beat it, you feel rewarded. And that's what I love about the Contra series is that it's hard, but once you get it done, you just feel rewarded. And uh, yeah, I look forward to playing uh, Shattered Soldier next year, um, but Neo Contra was a really solid game. I had a lot of fun with it too. And that's all the games I've beaten in 2022. If you guys have a list of games you've beaten in 2022, definitely leave it down below. And if you have a video of it, please let me know. And definitely leave a link in the comments so that I can watch them because I love watching these types of videos. Definitely check out Retro Rivals and Captain Algebra's games they've beaten in 2022. And look forward to the next one I do in 2023 with all the cool analytics that Retro Rivals likes to do. I've already got some games beaten in 2023, and my goal is to beat at least 50 games and one game from each system that I own. So looking forward to that. I think I can do it, and I hope I'm able to do it in next year. So look forward to that, and I hope you all have a really good day. Big thanks to Miasma Senpai, Ash the Man, and Warp Bay for supporting me on Patreon. You guys are awesome.